Hi everyone! This is the second video lesson about carbohydrates. In this lesson, we're going to focus on large carbohydrates known as polysaccharides. So let's start with a general definition. As you may remember from the previous video lesson, polysaccharides are carbohydrate polymers. So they're created when many monosaccharides, generally glucose, are joined together. So here we have a bunch of glucose molecules and they are joined via that condensation or dehydration reaction that we've seen before. So a water molecule is going to be removed between every pair of glucoses and then that will create glycosidic linkages between all of them. So here's our resulting molecule down here with the glycosidic linkages indicated. Let's revisit those glycosidic linkages as you'll need to know a bit more about them now. In the last video, we briefly looked at alpha and beta glycosidic linkages. If you'll remember, you can recognize alpha glycosidic linkages because the monomers that are linked with alpha glycosidic linkages are all kind of facing the same way. And the linkages themselves are also facing the same way. So in this example, the linkages are kind of pointing downwards. Now, when many glucose molecules are joined using alpha glycosidic linkages, something kind of interesting happens. If you look at these first two, you can see there's a bit of an angle between those two glucose molecules. And when we add another glucose, the angle is magnified, so it starts to sort of bend because the, uh, the bond angle is additive. So every time, it's a little bit more of an angle. And you can imagine as this keeps going, the molecule is going to start to kind of coil around like that. So with alpha glycosidic linkages, it causes a chain of glucoses to coil into a spiral shape or a helical shape. So polysaccharides that have alpha glycosidic linkages end up with a helical shape. Another thing to know about alpha glycosidic linkages is that humans are capable of digesting them or breaking them apart. And the reason is that our guts, our digestive systems, make enzymes that can hydrolyze those linkages. They can perform hydrolysis on them. What about the beta linkages? Well, again, you learned how to recognize beta glycosidic linkages already, where the monomers are alternating which direction they're facing, and so are those glycosidic linkages. And when we put together a bunch of glucoses this way, something different happens with the angles. So you can see there's an angle between those two, but the next bond is going to be facing the opposite direction, and so it actually cancels out the bond angle that we saw in the first pair. So if we put many of them together, you'll see that there is no cumulative bond angle and the molecule doesn't bend. So if we put lots and lots of glucoses together, we get something like this, or a straight chain shape. So polysaccharides that have beta glycosidic linkages end up with that straight chain shape. The other thing you need to know about beta glycosidic linkages is that humans cannot digest them or break them apart. And the reason is that our digestive systems do not make any enzymes that can hydrolyze beta linkages. So if you eat a polysaccharide containing only beta linkages, you can't digest it at all and it actually goes straight through you and comes out the other end. So that's what you need to know about alpha and beta glycosidic linkages. Now we can take a closer look at the polymers that contain them. There are four types of polysaccharides that you're going to need to know for this class. They are starch, which looks kind of like that, glycogen, which looks like that, cellulose, which has this general structure, and also chitin, which I'm not going to show you right now. It's a little more complicated and a little less common. For each of these four polysaccharides, you're going to need to know which organism makes it, what they make it for, so what the function is, the general structure of the polysaccharide, and also can humans digest it or break it down. We're going to go through all four of these, but this video is only going to cover the first two, starch and glycogen, and then we're going to go over cellulose and chitin later in class. So let's start with starch. If you think about starch or starchy foods, you probably think about things like rice, or potatoes, or maybe bread and pasta. And if you think about where all those things come from, they all originate from plant sources. So starch is a polysaccharide that's made by plants. If you think about these potatoes for a minute, well, potatoes are at the bottom of the plant and the plant is using them to store energy. So that is the function of starch. Plants make it in order to store energy. In terms of the structure of starch, it's many glucoses that are linked by alpha glycosidic linkages. So if we take a small section of starch, you can see those alpha glycosidic linkages there. 
And because of those, as you will recall, the alpha glycosidic linkages cause the molecule to fold into a helical shape. So that's why starch looks like this. So that covers structure and function, but we also want to know if humans can digest starch and get energy from it. And this one I think you already kind of know. So if you think about it, if you eat starch, can you get energy? Yeah, absolutely. So you might eat a really big plate of pasta the night before you have to, say, run a marathon, and you know it will give you energy. You can break it down and get energy from it. But you have to eat it the night before the marathon. You can't eat it right as you're starting the marathon. So it takes a little bit of time. And the reason is that our guts need time to use their enzymes to break down those alpha glycosidic linkages. It does take a little bit of time. So if we go through an example, here is a representative starch molecule. You can see those alpha glycosidic linkages. Here comes our enzyme. It's going to use a water molecule, split that water molecule to perform a hydrolysis and release a glucose. And then that enzyme can go on to the next glycosidic linkage, split a water molecule, perform hydrolysis and release another glucose. And as this happens over and over again, the enzyme eventually breaks apart that starch molecule into lots and lots of glucoses. And as you know from the previous video lesson, glucose is a really great source of energy for cells. So yes, we can absolutely break, break apart starch, hydrolyze those alpha glycosidic linkages and get lots of energy from it. The next type of polysaccharide you need to know is glycogen. And this one you may not have heard of. Glycogen is a slightly different molecule and it's actually made by animals and they make it for energy storage, usually more short term than long term. For example, you store glycogen in your muscles and in your liver. So if you ate that big plate of pasta the night before your marathon, but you didn't end up using all of the glucose when you hydrolyzed those alpha glycosidic linkages, you'll store the extra energy by knitting those glucoses back into glycogen. Humans store about one day's worth of calories as glycogen at any given time. If you're eating way more calories than you're burning, any additional extra calories will get stored as fat, which is not a carbohydrate. It's actually a type of molecule called a lipid, but we'll get to those in a few days. So you don't need to worry about that for now, just glycogen for today. In terms of the structure, glycogen is made of many glucoses joined by alpha glycosidic linkages. So once again, there's our alpha linkages and you know that causes a molecule to fold into a helical shape. But glycogen is actually a little bit different because not only is it coiled into a helix, but it also has branches. So here you can see one main helix here and then other branches coming off it all in that coiled shape. Can humans obtain energy from breaking down glycogen? Yes. And again, it's because we have an enzyme in our gut that can hydrolyze those alpha glycosidic linkages. So when you eat the muscle or the liver of another creature, so if you're eating steak or liver, you're going to be able to break apart the glycogen in there and release the glucose and get energy. But you can also, of course, break down the glycogen in your own muscle and liver without having to eat them. And so you can get energy from there too. So here you can see breaking down the glycogen in your muscles into glucose and breaking down the glycogen in your liver into glucose. So that's everything you need to know about starch and glycogen. In class, we'll go over the other two polysaccharides you need to know, cellulose and chitin. So until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other.